absolutely true. A new study suggests married people are 14% less likely to die after a heart attack than single people. Researchers at Ashton Medical School believe the findings emphasize the importance of physical and emotional support during recovery. We're joined right now by Dr. Rahul Potluri, who led the research, and by Tony Clare, who had a heart attack in December last year. I think actually, Tony, you've had two, haven't you? More than one. Well, we'll come to you in a minute. Um, let's just talk about the research for, first of all. And, you know, there is that saying, love is the best medicine. What it could actually be true. Uh, yeah, I think uh, this research that we are presenting at the British Cardiovascular Society suggests that people who are married or are living together uh, with a partner uh, seem to do much better. And as you say, for the married people do 14% better uh, than single people or divorced people after having a heart attack. And this is long-term survival. So certainly there seems to be some evidence to suggest that this is true. So it's not about having a heart attack in the first place. This is about how you, what happened after you had a heart attack. That's correct. So this is looking at sort of how, how, you, how your prognosis is after having a heart attack, dependent on your marital status at the time of having a heart attack. And... Uh, Tony, how much difference, oh, you've been married 16 years, is that right? 16 years. How much difference did it have having very close family around you in your recovery? Well, in the recovery phase, the first phase of recovery after a heart attack, you need to rest the heart muscle. So you mustn't do any strenuous exercise at all. So that means I'm afraid I don't have to mow the lawn, I don't have to clip the hedges, I don't have to do any particularly heavy lifting or domestic chores. So having help around enables you to fully rest to start with before you start to build up the heart muscle strength through progressive exercise. Tell us a little more about, so you've had two heart attacks, what, yes. what was the time lapse in between the two? The first one was in July 14 and the second one was in December 2015. And in between those times, had, had looking back on it now, did you behave correctly? I mean, did, did you think you rested enough? Is, it, is there anything you draw from that period of time? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I followed all the guidelines, so I, I took the rest. I then went to the cardiac rehabilitation program on a weekly basis, built up the exercises recommended. I've taken all the medications. I, I would say having someone close with you all the time helps even on the medications. There are times where you need a bit of nagging to be reminded to take your medications at the right time, in case you forget. So that helps. So it's interesting, Doctor, isn't it? In some ways, Tony is a good example because he's saying, you know, that it helps and having a loved one and, mm. and help. On the other hand, he has had two heart attacks. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we're not saying that uh, marriage um, uh, or having a relationship will protect you from having a heart attack. But that is determined by a number of other factors. Uh, but of course, always, what what it is, what does protect you from having further heart attack? It is the fact that you're able to take all the medications that are prescribed to you after having a heart attack and as Tony alluded to having the correct environment and support to be able to do that um, and ensure you do that will protect you for as long as possible. I suppose the interesting thing is from what Tony's saying so you, you were able to have physical rest and you've got family helping you and all the rest of it also help with your medication what then can you do as doctors to sort of replicate this support that couples might have that perhaps a single person wouldn't? So I think uh, cardiologists generally are very good at treating medical problem, um, but treating the whole patient as a whole and addressing all the psychosocial factors, uh, we could do much more work at. And actually a recent British Heart Foundation uh, report into that has suggested that we should be much better at this cardiac rehab um, that Tony alluded to. And as part of this cardiac rehab, we should, um, I think, try and create some sort of support networks which will uh, encourage patients, particularly those at higher risk, to develop friendships and support groups so that they can sort of artificially replicate the sort of support that you have in a relationship. I'm guessing in a way, Tony, it's about who you listen to, isn't it? And, you know, if there's someone you love very much who's telling you what you should or shouldn't be doing and reminding you, maybe, that can make a big difference. It can. You, you get reminded not to go too far in doing exercise, and that keeps that under control. There's also the emotional side to it, because a heart attack is a very traumatic process. It reminds you of your own mortality. And having someone that you can talk to, to say what is it that you really want to achieve for the rest of your life, helps you to come to terms with the fact that actually there is an end to the runway at some point. I've just seen you pictures of your family there. How are you at the moment? Can you, how are you? I'm fine. I'm back at work full time. Um, since December, I was part time for two to three months, gradually worked back up, and I'm now full time. So I'm, I'm back to the nose for the grindstone. We wish you well. Thank you very much.